Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin, and together we are going to be diving in to see what you got going on in your career, in your job, in your workspace, and your finances over the next few weeks. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back as always, my kindred spirits and anyone new who may be joining us here on the channel today. It's wonderful to have you here. I do pick a card readings every single Monday as well as art magic, a little bit of dabbling into some charm casting. So if any of that interests you, do feel free to subscribe. But today we are going to be looking into your earthly pursuits of career, into finances, into your job, your workspace, your passion projects and hobbies. We're going to be looking into those sorts of things here with each of the piles but if you have a question or query on your mind that isn't related to this or you want to look even further then definitely feel free to check out the digital readings that I have listed through my Instagram but I also do snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail it's typewritten on a vintage typewriter from the 1970s and is even wax sealed closed just for you and I take a lot of time and a lot of consideration for your question and your personal situation um, and really take my time for each of these readings. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you really want me to get into it, then definitely feel free to check those out down below through my Instagram or Linktree. And also over there, you can also find any helpful reviews of those of you who have purchased your own or have received your own that have been really helpful. So do feel free to check out those all down below, as well as any of the other offerings for rainbows, rainbow earrings for pride or spell and ritual papers. I also do have been creating some handmade um, embroidered charm casting cloths that might be of interest for a few of you, but all of it is a great way to not only support yourself spiritually, but also to support the channel. So do feel free to check those all out down below, but let's go ahead and look at the piles. So here are all of the piles. We are sticking with my typical career reading theme of a rune. So here for pile number one, the rune here is of Sawilo, kind of looking at like a little Harry Potter lightning bolt or a, um, uh, a, a, an S. <laughs> so that is pile number one. If you're feeling called to rune for pile number two, the rune here is the gauze. Um, it kind of looks like an hourglass this way or a bow tie this way, um, but that is pile number two. And then last but not least here, for pile number three, we have a very difficult rune to pronounce, which is Uruz, which is kind of weird, but I do really like this one, so um, I was feeling very called to pull it out here for pile number three. So if you're feeling this one, then that is pile number three. So before you start heading off to the timestamps, as always, I like to give you a moment here to take a deep breath together so that you can really connect with your intuition, connect with the piles, see what's really calling out to you. So let's go ahead and take that deep breath together here now. And as always, there are no right or wrong ways to choose your piles here, especially with this one because they kind of felt very intermingled. Uh, so feel free to take your time, choose more than one pile if you need to, or take your time and choose a different one if you aren't feeling the one that you chose. So all of the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And if you're interested in any of the different offerings that I provide to support yourself in this channel, then definitely feel free to check those all out down below on my Instagram or through my link tree. Um, if you have any questions about any of those, uh, then do feel free to message me or email me as well. Uh, so with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started here with Pile number one. Hello group one, if you've decided to choose the rune of Sawilo here, which we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, then this is the pile for you to look into the next couple of weeks, even possibly the next three months, to really look into what you have going on in career, in your financial goals and um, pursuits, and then also just seeing generally what's going on, you know, when it comes to your job and your workplace. So we're going to be seeing those sorts of themes show up here today, but we're going to be doing that with the charms as well as several different oracle decks, the Everyday Witch Terra, which is definitely a very witchy deck, but for whatever reason is such a career reader. Uh, so 
definitely pulled that out for you all today, but all of the decks and supplies will, as always, be listed down below in the description, and let's just get right into it. So we're going to first look at the specific rune that you chose for your pile. So here is Sawilo, it kind of looks like an S here, and it says it's kind of represented by the sun, and some of the keywords here are energy, fuel, power, manifestation, innocence, and positivity, and hope, as well as this driving force and truth, right? If we think of the sun, it can talk about like being positive, being optimistic, but there's also the feeling of the sun represented in the fact that when the sun is out, right, the shadows are also gone, especially at high noon if you're at the equator, right? So, so it definitely is this idea that the sun can really enlighten us or to show us the truth about a situation um, without any shadows, without anything um, sort of obscuring the light. And of course, it's an energy source. So we're going to be seeing which parts of those kind of three key messages that the sun brings forward is coming forward for you. So we're going to be doing that here in a moment but do feel free as always to use your own intuition as we move through the cards and through this reading um, to you know see what's really speaking to you and listen to your own gut but we're gonna start here first with some tarot cards just to get an idea of the current situation and where you might be heading in the next few weeks so for a career in the next few weeks any shifts changes in the workplace with finances those earthly pursuits we're going to be seeing what's shifting changing pivoting or happening over the next few weeks for you group one so group, group one what's going on here for group one so first off you've got the knight of pentacles so the pentacles has a the pentacle suit has a lot to do with finances career earthly pursuits right it literally is represented by the earth element and in this case you have the knight of pentacles being the first card that came out so it's going to be sort of our focus card and uh as you can see they are the knights are all about moving forward. If you think of the knights, they're, they're the ones trying to charge us forward or trying to get us to make a change or to move forward in some way. And in this case, uh, out of all of the knights, this is the slowest moving one. So if you think of like the turtle and the hare or the tortoise and the hare situation or the rabbit and the turtle, uh, this is the, the tortoise. This is taking your time um, and reaping the, the rewards in the end. So there's something about needing to take a slower pace and to pace yourself. So we have that showing up here at the Knight of Pentacles, but we'll talk about more of it as we see the surrounding cards. So let's go ahead and pull some more. So group one here, the Knight of Pentacles, what's surrounding this energy? Group one, group one for career, for finances. So you have the High Priestess here with the number two. This is a major arcana card. So this is usually something that's quite a a really big life event or a big thing that's going on right now. And the High Priestess talks about us using, as you can see, they have tarot cards, runes here, a crystal ball. So they're really looking into the future. You're really looking towards the future, but making very like I said, very careful steps, um, taking your time, very, you know, considering your situation very carefully. So when it comes to your current situation, when it comes to your finances, your career, maybe you're looking for a job, but maybe you're currently in um, a situation where it's kind of a little sticky and you want to make some changes or you want to move forward on something, um, it seems that to do that, you're going to really need to make some very careful steps. You're going to need to really map it out and to take your time. So we're going to see what else is coming through. This also can talk about magic, manifestation, and um, working with our intuition. So we're going to see if those themes come up as well. Group one here with the seven of wands as well. And the seven of wands is about, um, as you can see, this person is, is kind of like the the celebrity amongst amongst the crowd. They're the person who is currently holding a lot of power in the situation. Um, someone who has the spotlight, who has, um, who is kind of on a pedestal or has a an opportunity to really share your voice or to to share um, your your ideas and your passions. And you're in doing so, as you can see, they're giving one of these roses away to this little 
um, person over here or this person in general over here. And so in this case, it's making me think that right now, especially with this outstretched arm here, this outstretched arm here, even these arms are outstretched. I feel like right now you're really wanting to give and give and give and give and give, whether that's giving to the people in your life, whether that's giving it your all, or whether that's um, wanting to share your wealth, share your skills, something like that is coming forward. We have two more cards I'm going to pull here to get the bigger situation, then we'll see how they all connect. Okay, so we have the Eight of Cups here for you, and I'm going to go ahead and take this one as well, and then the Seven of Pentacles. And again, we have another person outstretching their arms. Uh, the only one that isn't outstretching their arms here is the Eight of Cups. In this case, they're at their sides, they're holding to their, their goods here, they're not, they're kind of really hold, they're being very persistent, um, and very, maybe not persistent, maybe that's not the word I'm looking for, the, you're there's a lot of um, perseverance and power in this card. Uh, so, okay, let's just have a, real, uh, a bigger look at everything that's happening here. Because sometimes I like to get ahead of myself. So, biggest theme, biggest theme that's coming forward for you all is taking your time. You have three cards showcasing it. You have the Knight of Pentacles, which is a, a knight about wanting to move forward. The High Priestess, who wants to move forward as well. Um, and then also the Seven of Pentacles here. But all of them are wanting to move forward in a slower pace, taking their time, really considering the entire situation that you're in right now before making any big changes, before taking any big leaps. So right now is definitely not the time to be making any really big, harsh or um, sort of impulsive decisions. It's about taking very carefully considered steps and taking it very slowly and also knowing that um, the time you're putting in for putting in these careful steps are going to pay off. Because here in the Seven of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, as you know with the Pentacle cards, they are related to our career, to our finances. And in this case, the Seven of Pentacles, they are tending to these grapes. As you can see, though, the grapes aren't necessarily ripe yet. They're not ready to take off of the vine, but they're getting there. They're getting close. Um, so when you, whenever I see the Seven of Pentacles, it means you're really close. You're on the, pe the precipice of a change. You're on the precipice of being able to, uh, you know, find more abundance. Maybe that's through a new career, whether that's through a job, whether that's through a raise, whether that's through even just being understood and appreciated in your job, something like that. But whatever it is that you're waiting on, if you're waiting for some sort of change, waiting for a sign, waiting for an opportunity to come forward, or just waiting on something that you've been working really hard on to complete, it's it's very close, especially in these next few weeks. You're getting very close, um, just not there yet. I think you taking these smaller, careful steps and making sure you don't rush things with any career projects that you're in or making any big impulsive decisions is going to pay off in the long run. So definitely take your time right now. Um, and then you have the Eight of Cups showing that, like I said, this is the only card that feels a little bit different than everything else. The Eight of Cups is giving me more of a, it usually represents, cups represent our emotions. It represents us needing to, as you can see, this person is leaving their emotions behind. They are leaving a situation that is no longer emotionally fulfilling, that is no longer for them behind. And so whether this is a project, whether this is a job, whether this is a person, um, whether this is just a really big blown out of proportion conversation, whatever it might be, there's something that is going to be released over these next few weeks emotionally that is going to give quite a lot of power back into your hands. Um, as you can see, they're walking away with this little bag here. Um, so it really feels like you're putting, the power is going to be moving back into your court, or you're going to be finding um, some peace when it comes to this situation. So if you know what that is, like I said, it doesn't feel like it's maybe for everyone here, since it's very much an outlier to the rest of the cards. It still is something to consider, um, especially when you have so much that you're considering here. And then the last card here that we haven't really talked about, but we'll, don't worry, we'll pull more cards here in a minute, um, is the Six of Pentacles, or sorry, the Six of Wands. And this is about having an opportunity over these next few weeks to really share your voice or to share your ideas, whether that's in a meeting, whether that's in a, um, it feels like more of a social situation, but really needing to share your ideas or share your passion or share your, something that you're going to be changing up here. Um, 
and that you've been considering changing up even, uh, that this is the time to maybe start putting your, putting, putting your feet into the water, just testing the waters a little bit and sharing some, some of your ideas, your two cents on a situation. Um, that's really what I'm getting from this card. It's very kind of vague though, so I want to see if there's any other cards that are going to show up as we go forward that can give us a little bit more information on this one here especially since you have the sun here, which is all about enlightening things. I definitely want some enlightening on this one. So as we move forward here, um, we are going to pull a card here for you that's going to be seeing your perspective on the next few months when it comes to your career, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to wealth. We're going to be seeing where your perspective is. What I love about these cards is they have questions at the top of each of them that can be really helpful to kind of prompt those those viewpoints out. So let's see for you where your personal viewpoint is on career, money, um, jobs, and work over these next few weeks. <laughs> and then you've got the sun again. It's definitely coming forward, the sun energy. I think we want to pivot towards that. And like I said, I didn't really know what the six of wands was really about, but the more that I look at it, the fact that they are the sun, that they are the the sort of leader in this situation, that they are the one in the spotlight like a sun really would be, is really giving me this feeling that you are going to be moving into the spotlight. Maybe a leadership position might show up over the next few months. Um, it feels less like weeks, feels more like the next few months, um, but it feels like you're going to be moving into a higher position. You might be moving into, you know, the leader of a project. Maybe you are leading a meeting. Maybe there's something that you are getting more power in your hands with. Something around that, the idea of the sun being that you are in the spotlight, that you are getting more even heat on you. Like, I'm kind of getting this feeling too, like it can be good, right? It can be good to move up in a position, but sometimes it also means that we're, maybe you weren't ready yet, or maybe it's not something that you wanted, and that now you have like the heat on you, almost like you're in the spotlight in a less than ideal way. So that's something to consider as well. Maybe that's your perspective right now when it comes to um, maybe having more power in your hands and maybe it's not something you want. Maybe you want to step down a little bit. Maybe you want a little bit less power in your hands. Maybe you want to be able to breeze through a little bit more. Um, so I see this in your perspective. I feel like it can be, you know, one of one or both ways showing up here. Some of you might really like the spotlight. Some of you maybe don't. But this is coming through mostly for the sun energy for you. And then to finish off your reading before the charms, I want to pull a red light and green light card here. So the red light is going to be showcasing something to leave behind in these next few weeks, whether it's in your perspective, maybe it's an opportunity that shows up. It's basically like a cautionary card. And then over here, a green light is obviously something that we want to have happen or something that would be a good opportunity or something to follow. So let's start first with the red card. And as always, do feel free to send your own energy in and to see your own perspective on these cards. Oops. Group one, you have the weaver here, patterns, connections, um, and mediation. So here we are with the weaver. And what I like about this weaver, or rather that I'm getting from this weaver, is it feels like someone is maybe weaving you into a web you weren't necessarily asking for or, or looking forward to. Like I said, there's a lot of steady pace here that you've been taking your time or you've been very, um, very uh, patient with a situation that may have been slowly unraveling. Um, over the last few weeks, maybe months, um, at your job. So it feels like a less exciting thing. Um, it feels like someone's maybe trying to pull you back into their orbit, even though you're trying to walk away, especially since it's falling right under this Eight of Cups. It feels like you're maybe getting stuck in a loop, stuck in a situation, being weaved back into a situation you no longer want to be a part of. Um, we did have that with the sun. It can represent showcasing us a truth as well. So there could be the truth of a situation coming forward around someone who's sort of weaving you back into their web. Um, definitely consider what that might mean for you um, on a more individual basis, but we're going to pull your green card as well. So this is something that you want to maybe bring into your life, an opportunity that would be really good for you. So here we are. We have the author here, which says, 
spirituality, devotion, and higher powers. Very different kind of energy than most of the career reading things that we would be getting here. But really what I, I always get from this card outside of the keywords is the idea of like authoring our own lives, allowing ourselves to be the main character, allowing ourselves to realize when we're being the side character in a situation. And that's really what I'm getting here is maybe that that's where that truth is coming in. These three or four cards feel very connected in the idea that like you're taking your time, you're considering things, you're really not trying to make big impulsive decisions, but because you're not like impulsively moving on, someone keeps weaving you back in and keeps saying, oh, well, I'll give you better benefits or oh, I'll give you better pay or oh, I'll give you more leadership positions even though you're not getting paid for it, right? Like there's something, there's something a little bit under the surface under all of this and that this author feeling feels like they are currently writing the narrative for you, whereas um, you're just sort of following the script uh, and I feel like you're ready to to maybe slowly make some changes here, that there's something you're considering changing um, because it's no longer really working. There might be some threads that need cut. So that's really what I'm getting here from your card so far, but let's go ahead and finish up with just a few charms. So do feel free as always to send your own energy in and we'll pull some charms here for you. So group one, career and financial. So we got a few different charms coming out here. I'm going to go ahead and drop this one, see where it shows up. Okay, so let's zoom you in here. I'll move these two up for you. You have a few different charms showing up. Let's look first at the weaver charm that showed up here on the weaver with patterns, connections, and mediation. You have the little Simba charm here. So whenever I see this, it represents innocence, childhood, um, maybe even naivety or naivete, naivete, however people say it, but feeling very naive about a situation or feeling like someone thinks you're naive, but really you know they're twisting a web, really you know that they are pulling you back into their orbit, even though it may not be for your best interest, but rather for theirs, so there's something showing up there. Um, you have the crab showing up here, um, which can represent a cancer in your life, right, so a sun in their sun, moon, or rising for their star sign, so that that might be showing up here with someone related to whether it's related to the situation of someone you're leaving behind or this emotional situation you're leaving behind or it can be connected to what you might be considering moving forward um, so this could represent a person but it can also represent being more selective being more um, careful being more cautious uh, that's what's showing up here and then uh, in your tool belt of this night, you have the self-care charm. So this is self-love, self-care, but when I think of self-care, sometimes people just think like the, you know, taking a bath, really getting cozy, spa night kind of self-care, but self-care can also represent meaning that you care enough about yourself to make changes even if they seem difficult. Um, so that's kind of show, that's kind of the energy that I'm getting here more so. Uh, and then you also have the blue moon charm showing up here with the sun, which is interesting with the moon and the sun. But the, the blue moon charm means that there could be an opportunity that shows up that's once in a blue moon kind of a, a opportunity. That, so it's an opportunity that only shows up every few years that you might want to hop on. Um, and that is going to be giving you a lot more comfort because there's this like fluffy comforting charm and also is going to maybe relieve a bit of um, the pressure and responsibilities that you have in your life right now um, because this represents responsibility and um, keeping, pro keeping to your promises. So there might be an opportunity that shows up as well that you might want to be hopping on or carefully considering as well. So those are all of the charms and cards that I have here for you, group <laughs> group uh, one here. I do hope that this has been useful. I do hope that this has been quite insightful for the next few weeks for you when it comes to your career, when it comes to your finances, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and if it was, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below how it resonated for you, if you know what this opportunity is, if you know what this weaver uh, situation is, 
business or anything else, I, I would love to hear your perspective down below. And if you haven't already and you love pick a card readings like these, uh, educational videos on charm casting and art magic, then definitely feel free and consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday that you might really enjoy. And I also do snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail on any question or query that's on your mind. Uh, so those are a lot of fun, definitely worth checking out. The kindred tip jar is down below as well in case you want to send in a little tip. All of the tips that go in there go straight back into the channel for decks and supplies. So um, it's a great way to support the channel, great way to support yourself. Uh, and thank you so much for hanging out here with me. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group two! If you've decided to choose this rune of the gauze, which we'll be talking about more here in a minute of, then this is the pile for you to look into your career, your finances, work, and job stuff, right? Anything that really encompasses those earthly tangible pursuits. Um, we're going to be doing that with the charms as well as the De several different oracle decks that I have here as well as the everyday witch tarot which is definitely a witchy deck but for whatever reason I find that this is a really good career reading deck so pulled that one out here for you all today uh, but I'll have this all listed down below in the description as always in case you are curious to see what we used here today but we're gonna start looking at your rune first so the rune that you have chosen here today for your pile is de gauze with evolution or it can also be represented as the day. So here we have restart, opposites, day and night, new cycles, growth and increase, reflections, changings, dawns and awakenings. So whenever I see this one, it always feels kind of like an hourglass with the, the idea of it being like day and night, time moving a progression of sorts. That's that evolution feeling. But it's also about kind of reflecting on those things and being in that present moment, that precipice in between. So very curious to see how this one shows up for you because it can be very different for everyone. So feel free to see which one of these sort of really latch on to you um, and maybe use that as a way of interpreting the cards as we move forward. Because as always, I like to give you the opportunity to use your own intuition as we move through these with the charms and everything. So feel free to take your own time looking at the different cards, looking at the imagery, seeing what really sparks inspiration for you. But we're going to go ahead and begin here. So do feel free to send your energy in through time and space. And we are going to pull you a few cards to get the overall situation um, moving forward over the next couple of weeks for you. So career and finances the next couple of weeks a few weeks for group one so your main card here showing up for the first sort of central card is the nine um here with the hermit so what i really love about this specific hermit card and what makes this deck so great is that most of the time the hermit cards or when you hear the word hermit it usually kind of gives you a negative connotation of someone who's just sort of introverted staying inside not really leaving their place feeling lonely those sorts of things and those very well may be some you know the situation that you might be feeling right now and if so then do feel free to use your own intuition here but what I really like about this card especially is it can talk about wanting to kind of go your own, wanting to go out on your own or to do something that is a little bit different or to do something that is um, a little outside of your wheelhouse, but really taking the time to do something that is just for you or just a very independent thing that really gives you a lot of solitude and solace here so that's really what I like about this is that they just feel very like at home in themselves and they don't really need anybody else to really tell them what to do or where to go so this can be talking about maybe wanting to do something um, that is you know working from home or doing something that is very um much a one-man kind of team here versus very collaborative projects or collaborative um more social career path so that's really what's showing up up here first with the hermit this can also be t taking some time off as well this could go a lot of different ways so we definitely need some more context here next up we have the eight of pentacles definitely you guys are like a workhorse you guys can really get a lot done and again you're kind of chilling by yourself experimenting doing things on your own um there is this little like apothecary shop i think that they are trying to represent here which is giving me this feeling of like an entrepreneur working on your own doing something solo um 
sort of a business owner feeling. So that might be, you know, a path for, for a few of you. But on top of that, the Eight of Pentacles just talks about sort of experimenting, throwing things in, and also kind of... Um, honing in on your own craft, right? So this is about ex not only experimenting and getting things wrong, but realizing what works for you and really finding that sweet spot. So that's what's coming up here with the Eight of Pentacles is you're really getting in your groove and finding your sweet spot within maybe a new job that you're in, whether it's going on your own for something, whether it's entrepreneurship or however this this uh, hermit card is really showing up for you. Um... You also have here the Nine of Swords showing up here. So very different card showing up on either side. And we'll pull two more cards here in a minute. But I just want to look at this one real quick. So you have the Nine of Swords. And this is, as you can see, there's a bunch of swords on the wall. And the swords represent our thoughts. It represents usually, this is the idea of like when you're sitting up at night and you literally cannot sleep because the whole night you're just thinking and thinking and thinking and overthinking and then overthinking that and then just like spiraling in your mind. And as you can see, dawn is, is right on the horizon, but yet you feel just as tired and just as drained because of all of these anxious thoughts about what could be coming next and what's what's coming forward and all of this stuff. So when I'm seeing this one too, it can be that you might have a little bit of fear towards maybe making a change or making a shift that's related to this eight of pentacles of going on your own, of doing something more solo or having to be on your own again. Um, so there could be a little bit of a nervous feeling towards this or some anxiety, but let's go ahead and look a little further to get some more information next few weeks for group two here the next few weeks with career mm. okay next up here you have the queen of pentacles the queen of pentacles is a very nurturing queen they also can be a little bit stuck in their ways the queen of pentacles can really they feel comfortable they found a good space they've got you know, money right now. They There's no real reason to make a change, but the Queen of Pentacles can get a little stagnant. They can get a little stuck. They can feel a little bit like, you know, they're doing the same thing in one day in, one day out. Nothing's really changing and it feels very stagnant. Yes, it can be a really good place. Yes, you can be feeling like, yes, I have enough money. I have enough um, to sustain me, but maybe not enough to feel you know, passionate about what you're doing. So there's something showcasing here of like wanting to change, wanting to go on your own, wanting to, to take a little bit of a risk, but that risk is also, you know, a risk, right? So you might be losing some of this wealth that you have here, this abundance, this feeling of safety and comfort. But let's go ahead and pull one more here for you, group two. Alright, I wasn't really feeling those ones. I'm going to go ahead and try again here and see what comes out. So here you are with a card kind of similar to the Eight of Pentacles, um, but in this case you have the Seven of Cups. Um, so as you look at the, the Eight of Pentacles here, they kind of have all of these different cups um, and potions sort of aligned, but where the Seven of Pentacles doesn't know what to do with them, the Eight of Pentacles has finally figured it out. So the there's definitely this feeling that like... You're currently in a situation where maybe you want to change, want to go on your own, want to um, flip the script a little bit, do something a little bit risky. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be this big step. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to, like, you know, leave your job or do something that maybe feels very in irresponsible or feels very, um, like, totally against the comfort that you're feeling. But I feel like this anxiety is coming from not only, like, doing what it is that your heart is kind of desiring but also that if you don't do it what does that mean for you too um, where does that leave you so I feel like you're on this like this precipice of should I should I not do I do I not lots of questions lots of experimenting a lot of maybe even researching some ideas and with that influx of information and that influx of drive that's starting to kind of grow in your belly I really feel like um, that's what like the sunrise is that growing that growing passion in your belly it's also adding a lot of maybe stress and anxiety as well. So there is this feeling where you might do, you might change, you might do something that, that you're really feeling passionate about right now, 
but it is going to require a bit of a risk. So interesting situation to be in right now. So I'm really curious to see what card you get here when it comes to your perspective. So this is your perspective card over the next couple of weeks and maybe where your perspective is heading. Um, and what I like about this too is it asks prompted questions that can really help us to really think about where our perspective is when it comes to money and finance, job and work. So group one here, where's your perspective at right now, group one? Where is your perspective coming from? Or where might it be headed? Interesting. Um, so you have match here with butterfly milkweed and it says, where do I give and receive? So that is the question. Where do I give and receive? Because butterfly milkweed cannot exist without butterflies, right? It literally, they have to work together. They have to exist together. So there's this feeling that I'm kind of getting from this where the idea that we had that hermit coming forward of maybe wanting to go on your own, doing something by yourself doing something more independent or going and doing something like business entrepreneur kind of kind of energy coming forward but this is kind of giving us this feeling like you're like well how am I supposed to do this by myself or how you know trying to go through the ins and outs of the whole thing how can I exist without this butterfly without that um that uh, foundation of people to support you and it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have people to support you there's lots of people that maybe you haven't even met yet that could be really supportive co-workers of yours or could be people who you collaborate with or find um, helpful tips from or to can learn from even be mentored from especially since this little um this little owl I didn't mention but this little owl is at the top here it kind of feels like they're looking down on you and like giving you a lot of advice and help and um uh, a little bit of uh, wisdom being bestowed upon you. Uh, so there, there's this feeling where your perspective is well, kind of learning how to go it on your own or to do something on your own or to, to even go towards something that, you know, is maybe the opposite of what people might expect. And realizing that they still could support you, that there's a lot of people who are still going to be there for you, even if it means that you're flipping the script or doing something outside of your typical wheelhouse. Um, the reason why I say that too is because you do have the gauze here and opposites was really showing up for me here, this feeling of opposites or doing something that you don't normally do, being on that precipice right here from one plane to the other, uh, um, an evolution with that butterfly as well. So that's sort of the, the feeling that I'm getting here from Milkweed. Uh, but let's go ahead and pull two more cards and then we'll pull some charms to finish off your reading. But these two cards are going to be more specific. So we're going to be pulling a red card and green, or sorry, a red, red light and green light card. So the red light represents something that we are wanting to move away from, something that is a bit of a caution card for something to be cautionary of over the next couple of weeks. Maybe it's an opportunity, maybe it's a person, whatever. Uh, but then also here in the, the green light, that's sort of the opposite, something to take on, something that's going to be really good for you or a positive um, opportunity or person. So let's go ahead and find the first one here with the five of ink solvent, mistakes, forgiveness, and mercy here. This also feels like, this kind of feels... Um, especially with the connotation of the red light, that the roses represent that red light. So if we're looking at it from that perspective, and these are the solvent within ink is a way to um, erase ink, um, it's like an ink eraser, then this is erasing the challenges, erasing the thorns, erasing the, the beauty of trying to sort of figure out a situation. So the only way to erase something, to entirely erase all the anxiety, to erase all of the... Um, worries and nervousness and challenges that you might face um, as well as all of the beauty from facing them is to entirely not do it right it's to just let that that idea poof from your head and be gone and so this is a cautionary card is just telling me that this is definitely not something to you know completely leave behind to erase from your reality it is something that you are feeling called towards um, for a reason whether that's because you're feeling stagnant whether it's because even though you're comfortable it doesn't necessarily mean you're feeling fulfilled uh, so there there could be a lot of different reasons but that's showing up here as for the green light let's see what that green light card is for you Ooh, you got the gardens here 
pause safety and secrets and then there's you know again kind of working with another person so even though there is a lot about kind of needing to go on your own or do something different experimenting and kind of honing in on your craft with something um, and the fact that you feel like there maybe aren't people to support you there definitely are people who are maybe secretly supporting you right now people who don't even maybe you don't even realize have kind of picked up on the um, hints that maybe you put out there or have you know they just know you really well and they they kind of can tell some things up right so there's somebody probably already secretly supporting you right now or someone you just aren't currently aware of that could be a support system to you and a good opportunity or someone to um, confide in over these next few weeks so you have that showing up here as a green light but of course, we cannot finish a reading without looking at the charms here first. So we're going to go ahead and pull some charms to finish off your reading here to see the last little details coming forward. So as always, feel free to send your own energy in and let's pull some charms. you had four charms here but you all only have three interesting that this one flipped over because it is the flip-flop charm so whenever I see this one it represents feeling very flip flippity and floppity about a situation very wishy-washy not entirely in not entirely out right you're flipping and flopping all over the place um so this is like also, as it is a shoe, it's showcasing a direction as well, forward movement. And that forward movement is moving from a place where things are quite anxious and then sort of moving to a place where you've kind of figured things out that, again, this comfort that you've been feeling over here before with finances, with money, with a job, where this one might not give you exactly the same things in the exact same, you know, potion or way, it's going to give you a new flavor, a new perspective where now instead of looking towards those more earthly things you're maybe feeling more passionate about what you're doing or again because you're honing in on your craft you're learning more skills and things that can make you feel more confident so that's showing up here you also have the cage charm so oh you do have this one was just hiding underneath you then i love you charm showing up here on the um, match or the milkweed uh, with that butterfly people supporting you so that someone who really loves you and supports you is showing up here and then you have this freedom charm um, because instead of feeling caged, you're also feeling much more free. And so that's showing up here when it comes to your perspective shift. So where you might be feeling less free right now, that perspective is changing with the support coming through. And then here on the center card and on you um, as being shown here in the hermit card, you have the um, sewing machine and the sewing machine represents bridging two worlds together right if you think of sewing right it's taking two pieces of fabric and sewing them together stitching them together so what is something that you are stitching into your life this whole half feels like you're stitching it in to something that you already currently have going on for you and why can't you have both right so that's showing up here as well so all of your charms and cards are here and I hope you did enjoy this reading. If you did find this useful and helpful for you, um, definitely be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below how it resonated. If you maybe know what you're stitching together, maybe what this new hobby, passion, uh, project or maybe entrepreneur business is that you're going after is or anything else that showed up I would love to hear your thoughts and if you like these pick a card readings and you're also maybe interested in charm casting or art magic that kind of stuff then definitely feel free and consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday that might really you know pertain to your interests and if you have a specific question either about this reading or if you want to learn more about a question or query beyond this, then definitely feel free to check out the uh, personal private readings that I do for snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail and it is typewritten on a vintage typewriter and is in letter format and it's really cute and really fun. Um, but I also put a lot of time, a lot of care and energy and consideration about your specific personal subject um, or question. So if you want one of those or you want to see any helpful reviews definitely feel free to check out my instagram down below where you can find out more information as well as on other offerings that i provide thank you so much for hanging out here with me today and i hope to see you in the next one bye
Hello group three, if you've decided to choose this rune of Urus, then this is the pile for you. We're going to talk more about this specific rune here in a moment, but we're going to be using the charms here today, as well as the Everyday Witch Tarot and several different oracle decks, which I'll have listed down below as always for you to check out if you're interested. Um, I decided to use the Everyday Tarot here again. I almost always use the Everyday Tarot, I think, for all my career readings, even though it's a very witchy deck. Um, there's something about it that just works perfectly for me when it comes to to interpreting these career readings so that's the one we have pulled out here for you today do feel free to get yourself cozy get some water get settled if you'd like to but we're going to go ahead and talk about Urus or Urus or Urus it's a very hard one to pronounce and it's kind of like saying rural rural you know <laughs> but anyway wild ox this is what Urus really means is it represents the wild ox very you know has a lot of strength health, vitality, natural resistance, and another word with recovery. And I also really want to add persistence to this somehow, um, because persistence really feels like this as well, and perseverance, right? The wild ox perseveres. They have that strength, that raw power, but not in a way to like exploit that power, but if you think of an ox, right, they're just a powerful creature. So that's really what we have showing up here for you so far, just as the base level, but of course we're going to be looking even deeper. So feel free to keep that in mind. And as always, I like to mention, use your own intuition with this. See what comes through for you. If you see specific personal things or you're like, wait, that totally means that for me, then definitely feel free to listen to your own intuition. See what comes forward. Um, I always like to collaborate here with you guys rather than be like, this is the truth because I said it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, feel free to send your energy in through time and space as always. It really does make a difference. And we're going to pull five cards here to start you off to just look in the, the energy that's coming forward for you for money, career, finances, those earthly pursuits. So over the next few weeks. So group three, over the next few weeks, what's going on for them for career? So we've got two cards. I'll pull this one in a minute. I'm going to look at this one first. So first off, the main energy coming through here, at least the central energy, is the Ten of Swords, which doesn't really look like a very fun card, right? <laughs> Literally, there's someone running away from a scene where you've just been backstabbed. Um, but what I really like about this card in general is it usually represents an ending that we knew was probably inevitable or something that we just really need to have end, get wrapped up, right? This is like... The climax of a story, we're like ready for it to end, we're ready for it to, to finish up, to wrap up. So this could be a, a job or a project or um, a specific situation that you found yourself in financially that you're ready to end, you're ready to wrap up, you're ready to finish up. It may not be in the way that you wanted it to, right, in where the world card is always about wrapping things up as well. This is about like, you know, it maybe not being in the way that you'd hoped that it would, uh, but it's still... It's still that kind of endings energy coming forward. So I want to see what else you got here. You also got the Page of Cups, as this Page of Cups is very wild, very free, right? They've literally, they're running around barefoot with um, all of this paint, and they're very creative. The Page of Cups is very in tune with their intuition, in tune with their um, their emotions in this situation. So I'm curious to see how this is connecting with this one here, because at the moment there doesn't feel like a very specific connection. But we'll pull some more first. You also got the Three of Wands, which is about kind of looking elsewhere. It's kind of, or kind of getting a lot of energy about you maybe wanting to look elsewhere because a situation has maybe arisen where you have like a boss or a coworker or someone who's constantly kind of like stabbing you in the back or getting you in a situation that makes you feel like you want to end things. So you're ready for something to have that sunset come down. And here on the horizon, you have something else growing on the surface. The Three of Wands is also about wanting to look for new opportunities, look for new lands. If you imagine this in like a medieval times in a fantasy film, this is them on the cliff looking out and seeing the options, seeing you know, what they could set their, their compass towards, where they could set sail. So that's kind of the energy that we're getting here from the first three main cards. But of course, we're going to pull two more. So group, group three here. Let's see what's coming in here for you, group three. 
keep feeling one and then <laughs> there we go and then they just keep kind of flopping out I'm gonna get the other one as well so group group three okay so I went ahead and took the top card here with the four of pentacles and then you also have here the hierophant with the number five four to five whenever I see the the integration especially from where this usually represents the past, this represents the future, when you're looking at a spread. Um, the four of pentacles, or the, the four in general, represents safety, represents security, and the five represents, um, five usually represents um, change, or movement, or shifting something, looking from a new perspective. So when we're seeing, you know, a progression between four and five, there is a change that is needed from safety to kind of getting out of our comfort zone. So what I find interesting visually when we're looking at all of these cards, and I'll go ahead and hold these up to you so you can see them more closely if you want to pause and look at them for a moment, but what I find interesting is that it's almost kind of telling us a story here. Uh, so here at the beginning, we have the Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles here is all about sitting safely on your, your throne of wealth or whatever it might be and, and kind of you know, you're in this little jail cell, you're trying to keep everything in, you don't want anyone to find your treasure, you don't want anyone to find what you have, or what um, might be going on, you know, within your finances, whether it's that you have a lot of money in this chest, whether it's that you're, you've got a lot going on, whether it's that you're feeling what your feelings might be, it just feels like everything is under lock and key, nobody really can get a scope of how you're feeling or what's going on right now. Um, but as you can see, there's this little cat looking at the window and being like, ooh, I want to know what's going on out there because you've been kind of locked in this situation for a while um, where you don't really want people to either know what's going on or that you don't want to lose what you have, right? Even though there's something that maybe could be better for you, even though you're maybe in a situation that you already know might be toxic, might not be the best for you or isn't really working out for you anymore you're still sort of sitting pretty on this and keeping it as safe as possible which could be a very smart move for right now but there is a change that you know we can see kind of happening on the wind uh the three of pentacles is all or three of wands rather is looking directly down at and pointing at this window right and this window is, again, everything outside of this comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone. Everything that's outside of your comfort zone is where you are to be able to set sail, where you are to be able to look at other passions, look at other ideas, look at other opportunities that might be presenting themselves to you that don't have to be revolved around this Ten of Swords situation anymore. Um, so that's kind of coming forward when we're looking at this more thematically. Then you have that page of pentacles here, or sorry, I keep messing up my words today, page of cups here, as well as the uh, hierophant. The hierophant talks about kind of finding someone who can support you and teach you something new. Um, and then you also have like this creativity that's coming forward, this innocence, this childlike innocence of kind of playing around and getting you know, messy, kind of, literally that's what I'm getting here, is this, that you're learning how to be a little bit messy, to make a bit of a mess, to be able to reorganize your life a little bit, that there might be something that you maybe have to get a little bit messy, have to get outside of your comfort zone, have to kind of use some creative problem solving for, um, so that you can either leave this situation or to find a better a better solution for the situation that you might have currently found yourself in that yes maybe you're getting the finance um that you the financial security in but you're maybe not feeling emotionally fulfilled within this kind of showed up a little bit in group 1 I believe so if you're not entirely feeling these cards maybe check out group 1 but what you might be moving towards maybe these new avenues that you're setting sail on or at least flirting with the idea of might be related to um, a career or a job or a passion project related to creativity and creativity does not necessarily mean just fine arts here with an easel and paint but it could be coding it could be math it could be science it could be engineering it could be all sorts of things that we don't normally see as creative pursuits um, but it does seem like you're maybe being in a mentorship apprenticeship 
trade sort of thing showing up here with the Hierophant or someone who's able to kind of teach you. Um, so maybe some studying or schooling that's showing up here as well. So lots of big changes sort of on the horizon, but I don't feel like in the next few weeks you're actually making any changes. You know what I mean? You're like considering things, you're looking at things, but you're not necessarily, I don't really see you necessarily making really big steps or big leaps so that's just something to consider right now it just feels like you're considering your options so when we want to look a little bit further here we're going to see a perspective card so we want to see your current perspective as well as how it's moving forward into the future over these next few weeks on the situation what i like about this too is these cards talk um, about different prompts um, of questions for us to consider so we're going to see how those relate to your perspective as well so group three, your perspective on this situation over the next few weeks and how it might be changing or shifting. Okay, so you got the leopard frog and it says here, uh, swim with the, the prompt here of, am I flowing through metamorphosis? Right, metamorphosis meaning, you know, like kind of in the same way that we think of transformation, right? Are you flowing through transformation? Are you stopping the flow? Is something else stopping the flow of your own metamorphosis? These are things to consider when it comes to your current perspective on the situation and how you might be swimming through it. Uh, what I also think too is again, they're swimming. They're not necessarily making big leaps. When we think of a frog, right, we think of them leaping and leaping and leaping and making big impulsive or very big leaps into, into something new on the horizon. In this case, it really feels like more so that you are, you're swimming through it. You're understanding the situation. You're kind of moving through it. You're learning how to swim through the situation and how to swim, not only to just keep swimming and just keep swimming to tread water but also how to unlock you know what's beyond this window here um, to be able to actually swim in a direction that makes most sense to you so I see that this is over these next few weeks it's less about these things coming to fruition and more so how you are maybe sort of swimming and flowing through the opportunities that might be on their way in and how you might be kind of prepping yourself or reflecting and flowing through this situation. So that's kind of the, the feelings that I'm really getting here. Um, more vague that the, your pile is definitely kind of giving us some more of a vague situation. So I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below to see if there's things that really you know, spoke to you. Um, but we're going to go ahead and look at a red light and green light card. So the red light represents over the next few weeks something to be cautious of, like um, an opportunity, a person, a job, a situation. Um, and then we're going to see the same thing, but in a more positive, optimistic light. So something that you definitely is a green light. Definitely look after this. So we're going to see first your red light, something of a caution, um, something to um, consider over the next few weeks as a caution card. So you have the seven of ink illumination, accomplishment, realization, and pride. This doesn't automatically feel like a red light, right? It really doesn't give us that feeling, right? Accomplishment, realization, pride, that sounds like a good thing. Um, but I am getting this feeling towards the idea of pride, um, almost like you're too prideful to leave something or like you've gained a lot of pride in, in what you've done and how far you've come, that the idea of considering a new project, considering a new opportunity, considering changing or shifting things up could be really difficult for you um, and is something that you might have to move through. But I also am getting this feeling too, this, this can be a very perfectionism card as well, that if things don't go perfect, then you're not even going to try them at all. You know that feeling like when you sometimes... I don't know if you necessarily, but you know when, when people like have an idea in their head of how something's going to go and then once one thing doesn't work out, then the whole thing is ruined. It kind of feels like that sort of perspective. So this feels like more of a perspective um, that should be more of a caution or, or challenge for you over the next few weeks. But let's see your green light card. Ooh. You got the sun, which also came up a lot in group two. So if you're not really feeling like you have all of the full picture here for you, uh, definitely feel free to check out both group one and two. I feel like you could 
definitely benefit from that. Um, which I know is a lot more to watch, but do feel free to if you want to, because it is coming up here. But you have the Sun card here with nourishment, optimism, and leadership. Maybe moving into a leadership position. Um, it could also be this feeling of being more optimistic of what could be on the other side versus what has been. Um, being more optimistic about an ending and maybe that it could actually be a really good thing especially with the sun showing up here of of all of your cards you have a sun showing up in this one and it's about maybe being more optimistic about an ending that could be coming in and that it could actually be really beneficial to you even if it doesn't feel like it at the start but it really feels like you're trying to bottle up the sun here um, so maybe being more optimistic just in general. A lot of your your cards are less about like things that are happening and more about your personal perspective on the things that are happening. So it feels less like you are making changes or doing really big things, but rather that you're kind of just looking at your perspective and reflecting on your situation. So that's kind of what I'm getting here, but we're obviously going to finish off with the charms. So do feel free, as always, to send your energy into the charms here. And let's mix them up here for you to get those last little details here, group three. is a rolling um let's go ahead and see what you have here so i'm gonna go ahead and drop the two that fell let's see where they show up okay mostly in the center here and let's go ahead and look so i'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in a little bit and the first thing here on the swim card is you have a Taurus showing up here at the foot. Foot's usually representing a foundation or representing something about stability, um, right? So the Taurus in this case is trustworthy, someone to be that is very trustworthy in your life that could give you a lot of um, support, understanding, but also maybe a bit of a another perspective or a someone that can help you to flow through the situation, someone to lean on for support uh, in their sun, moon, or rising. Then you also have here the happy little face, but in this case, I usually see this as like someone who is not really showing their full face, right? They're putting on a smile. They're not necessarily being their true selves, masking in some way. And so when I'm looking at this, it really feels like someone who can can help you through this situation you might not be giving them their the full detail especially since this one showed up as well with a face um right it is a dime which can represent you know time changing on a dime right uh things changing on a dime but i'm really mostly getting the idea of like another another point towards your face and the fact that you might not be showing your true colors or showing showing your true stripes or or spots here um to someone who could be very supportive and really helpful to you, possibly a Taurus or an Earth sign. Here on your green light card, you have the uh, swan um, up here next to the sun, something you're trying to bottle up. In this case, it represents beauty. Whenever I see the swan, it can represent beauty, but it can also represent being fiercely protective of those they love and the things that they love. Um, and so maybe the reason why you haven't made changes is because you're trying to to keep comfort not only for yourself but maybe it's the people that you love that you fiercely love and want to protect and to keep safe and that's why maybe you haven't really been making a lot of big leaps and changes and bounds here and it could be for very good reasons why you might be staying in these situations because again there it's because you're trying to protect someone you love or trying to keep resources around finances around for those you love and to be able to provide for them um you do have this charm which i really need to clean it, it's just sort of I painted it so it got kind of sticky, uh, but it is a little paper clip here. It feels like you're kind of organizing um, your creative thoughts is what I'm getting here with the, the paper clip. Again, this creative card feels kind of like a mystery to me, so I would really be curious to see what you guys are seeing in this one if you already kind of have an idea. Um, you also have here in your little tool belt here that they have on their hip, the key to your heart. So again, this feels like if you could follow your desires, if you could just leave everything behind and follow your desires and go after a new situation or after a new opportunity or new passion project on the horizon that you could just 
get on the boat and, you know, let's ride kind of feeling, then you would do it. But the thing is, you have other earthly things that are tying you back or holding you back right now because you want to provide for someone or you need to keep something safe or you need the finances or there's a reason why you're taking your time. Um, and even though it's a hard and difficult situation or a challenging one for you right now, that it might still be worth the the effort um, put in or the, worth the the difficulty and the challenges um, for the payout so there's something showing up here for that and then on the seven of ink with this caution card you have the don't jump the gun uh, charm whenever I see this one it makes me think like you know don't jump the gun to consider your situation before, you know, making really big changes. Uh, so that also just in general felt like it was tied to the idea of a cautionary message. So those are all of your charms and cards here, group three. I do hope this was useful to you. I feel like your cards and charms really went everywhere, but didn't give us like a super cohesive direction, but rather just opened Pandora's box for you. So I would love, like I said, to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear what you think. Um, and maybe there's something you saw that I didn't. Maybe there's a piece of the puzzle that I didn't get to see. Um, so do feel free to let me know. And if you did enjoy this reading or you got something out of it, definitely be sure to give this video a like and if you like pick a card readings you like art magic and maybe you dabble in charm casting definitely feel free to check out the uh, subscribe button because then you can subscribe and see all the videos that I put out every single Monday uh, and also if you're interested in maybe looking at the nuanced pieces of this reading or other questions or queries on your mind for love, career, spirituality, or anything else under the sun, do feel free to uh, let me know as I can do a snail mail reading for you where I send a letter to you in the mail. It's typewritten on a vintage typewriter just for you and um, it's even wax sealed and everything. So if that's something that interests you, if you want to get your own um, very carefully considered reading, then definitely feel free to check out those down below as well as through my Instagram where you can see more information and see helpful reviews um, of others who have received their own. So with that all said, thank you so much for hanging out here with me today and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!